In today's video, we're going to be taking a look here at the tropics where we do have Tropical Storm Sean and then a high risk area of development. So we need to talk about both of those things. We're also going to be diving into the upcoming pattern as always, where we still have some pretty major storms on the way, including more nor'easter activity than we've seen in the last couple of model runs. So versus the videos that we've seen over the past couple of weeks, we're definitely getting a little bit closer uh, to something that looks a lot more like an El Nino fall pattern, which would feature those nor'easters. Like I said, we have had a couple storms like that thus far, but we're really moving into an area of the year in late October, November timeframe where you would start to see, see a lot more typically. And I think that we're moving in that type of a direction. Not only that, I know it's getting repetitive at this point because it's been the main topic for so long, but we still do expect Arctic blasts and big cooldowns to play a big role over the next couple of weeks. So as long as that's the case, I'm gonna continue talking about it. I see you guys in the comments and I wish that I could talk about something different, but I'm only gonna be able to talk about what's happening. Um, a little bit of a side note, this is going to be a long winded intro, but if you are curious about that, for those of you commenting, I just want to express, um, that this YouTube journey for me, it's been four or five years now. So it's been very long. Um, it is good because I'm always fed content. You know what I mean? Weather will not stop. Weather is going to keep going and I will always have content to make. But the thing is, is that I'm not in control of what content I'm making, if that makes sense, because all I can talk about is what's expected what's performing good, et cetera. So just to be completely transparent, I have to talk about what's expected. If I talked about what's unexpected, well, that wouldn't be good. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I like to just talk about what I see in the projected future. And that has been the case for a couple of weeks now. And it does get repetitive at times, but that is the weather. It doesn't obey what we want it to do. It does what it's going to do regardless. So that is what I will continue to do. Of course, if you don't appreciate that, then I do apologize, but that is what it is. Anyway, before we get into things, be sure to check out Prestige Weather in the description and pinned comment down below for early access to all of our monthly and seasonal outlooks and a lot of other consulting services within there. Check it out today in the description and pinned comment down below for five bucks a month. Let's get into things. And as you can see in the tropics, we do have Tropical Storm Sean, which we will dive into in just a second. We can see this area here, disturbance one, 80% chance of cyclone formation over the next seven days, only a 20% over the next 48 hours, but that does drastically increase over the next seven days. Uh, we've, it, this one's been an interesting one, a good example. We saw it start out as a yellow. I think it had like 20 or 30% to begin with over the seven day outlook, but we've seen that increase the next day to an orange and now a red the next day. So this one continues to climb day after day and oftentimes that's how this goes you know they don't they don't show a new disturbance and usually pop it out with an orange or a red right away usually they'll start with the lower chance when confidence is lower and then increase it over time they do fizzle out occasionally uh, but these are a little bit more easy to predict what the national hurricane center is usually going to do which is oftentimes increase it if there's a disturbance out there and they feel confident it's going to form you will see this increase like this. And usually in this MDR here, that's the area between the Caribbean and Africa, that is how it goes off in times. Anyway, with that being said, let's move into Tropical Storm Sean, which won't be Tropical Storm Sean for very long. By 8 a.m. tomorrow, you can see it's expected to be a tropical depression that'll only last through the day. And after that, it's gonna move into post-tropical cyclone status. So we're gonna see that coming to an end as well. Anyway. Let's go ahead and dive into the upcoming pattern. This has been a little unconventional for me, this video so far, but hey, maybe that's good. Let's take a look at tomorrow afternoon because this video is coming out rather late. As you can see, we do have a low around West Virginia, Pennsylvania, and Ohio. This was the storm that was supposed to become our nor'easter. It's going to move offshore. It's not going to ride along the coast like we originally anticipated. Um, so this one is looking drastically different than it did in the long range. And I think that's a good lesson to learn that sometimes that long range projection is going to shift over time. And that's why I always tell you guys to take things with a grain of salt, because the further out it is, the more skeptical you need to be. And I mean, our best guess is what the models are projecting. And if it historically makes sense, so you can use your brain a little bit. But the model guidance usually is your best guess, taking a, a mean average of all of those. And then with time, you oftentimes see some shifts or maybe it looks the same. If 
you know, if it was one or the other every single time, we would know exactly what's going to happen. But that is not how the weather works, unfortunately. With that being said, let's keep going towards Sunday, October 15th. And we see this is a much quieter day. Temperature pattern clearly looking something like this. So colder air diving into the eastern states. Um, so this is that Arctic blast finally taking place. We see rising warm air here over a lot of the west. So this is the overall trend here uh, that we've been seeing. So definitely taking a look at a pretty interesting pattern. Um, and this is a lot of what, again, we've seen. And off, oftentimes with these cool downs this time of year, well, any time of year for the most part, but especially fall time, I feel like you start to see this dreary weather across a lot of the Midwest, Ohio Valley and the Northeast in this case. We can see in the heart of that cool down, there is drizzly weather. It's probably very cloudy. And that is gonna be the theme here on Sunday, October 15th. So look out for that type of weather. Very classic fall time weather. Monday's a lot of the same here on October 16th. So we see that the jet stream is still doing a very dramatic ridge and trough here. Uh, so deep diving cold air here, just like that. And then we see this ridging warm air over the West. And that is certainly playing a big time role in all of this. Uh, everything starts from the West and is going downstream in the East is what you can imagine. So typically we see things moving from West to East, just like this. And then you'll start to see some differences as it's wobbling in this case, but still it's moving from point A to point B, point A being the West, point A, or point B, better yet, being the East. And what we see is that whatever happens at point A controls point B, of course. Whatever happens first controls what happens second. That's how you have to look at it. By this point on Monday, October 16th, we do see that this storm system is moving onshore to the Northwest as a 999. And this is bringing plenty of rainfall, even some snowfall there to the uh, Canadian mountainous regions there in British Columbia. By the time we reach Tuesday, you can see that this storm system in particular stays pretty far north as a 997 now. It's still located over Canada. We do see some impacts here for some of the northwestern states, some drizzly activity, some snowfall in there, but pretty quiet here. So a quiet start to this forecast. We even have that kind of, again, dreary, drizzly weather going on here in the northeast still by Tuesday, October 17th. And by Wednesday the 18th, what we see is that this cooldown is coming to an end, but rapidly we have this next cooldown moving in, and we see more ridging indicative of a positive PNA happening out west. So we see this type of a jet stream pattern, something like that, uh, but this cold air is moving in in a hurry. Let's see by Thursday, and we can see this is really taking aim. Uh, so as you can see, this storm system is again bringing very similar dreary conditions within that cooldown. So cold plus cloudy plus drizzle, classic fall stuff like I mentioned earlier. And by Friday the 20th, what we will see is that this is all kind of coming together. We had our original low here, another low wanting to develop here, and probably a lot of this energy is transferring, and we're gonna see a strengthening low offshore here. So let's just move a couple of hours, and sure enough, uh, we can see that by the time reaching early morning on Saturday, the 21st, it's going to be uh, approximately 2 a.m. on Saturday, Eastern Time. And as you can see, this is very close to South Carolina and North Carolina there. By the time we reach Saturday afternoon, we see a 992 for North Carolina and South Carolina. And this is bringing impacts to a lot of the East Coast, even as far northward as Southern New England there. So a pretty impactful system to say the least. Sunday, October 22nd, we see that there's a couple of lows along the coast. We're going to see these conditions of pretty stormy uh, situation kind of just continue here for the eastern seaboard. And then by the time we're reaching kind of Monday morning time frame, we get a bonus day here since I'm making a later video. We see maybe another storm system developing here and some ridging happening in the west. So maybe finally a flip to this pattern. Only time would truly be able to tell, but this is interesting to say the least. Let's take a look here at the total precipitation here. And as you can see uh, in the reds, we have along the northwest, plenty of precipitation happening. And then also along the east coast with a lot of those nor'easters that we saw, uh, that is going to be another area that we're watching for some above average activity. So those two areas in particular, I am pinpointing as areas to watch here. So for the eastern seaboard here, and then the northwest. Let's keep going, and as we take a look here at the total snowfall, we can see a little bit less than we've seen over the last couple of model runs. 
as most of the cold air stays over the east. We see a decreased amount of snowfall here across the Rockies and Sierra Nevadas, but still a dusting to a couple of inches in a few places, especially the higher elevations, over the next 10 days. Now the temperature pattern, as I mentioned, we still expect cool downs, uh, especially by the time we're reaching Monday, we see the next kind of round of that much cooler weather. Uh, so warmer temperatures along the western seaboard here, positive PNA. Um, so we see this cold air really, really diving southward here for a lot of the east as a result of that. Very classic stuff. As we keep going, uh, we see that cool down kind of comes to an end, but we have that next cool down that moves in. And this time it's a lot less potent and a lot less widespread, but we can see it right here. So this one is going to be a little bit less major, of course, but we are continuing the theme of cooldowns in the east, to say the least. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. And be sure to subscribe for more daily videos just like this one. We do upload every single day. Be sure to also hit the bell icon for daily notifications when we upload so you never miss one. Like the video if you did enjoy it. Leave a comment down below, and I'll see you guys in the next video.